Hi, this is Guy, everyone's favorite crypto guru. Before I jump into this short overview of Loki, you should know that we are not paid or mandated to do any of our reviews. I'm not your financial advisor and this is not financial advice. We do our research and present our views for educational purposes only. Oh, and one more thing. If you're new to this channel, then you may want to hit that subscribe button for the latest news, reviews and analysis. Now, let's get right back to Loki. Loki is a privacy-centric cryptocurrency that was forked from Monero in 2018. Essentially, they're trying to develop a completely anonymous, private and secure crypto. So, a lot like Monero, as it happens. So how do they differentiate themselves? Well, they're building something called service nodes on top of the Monero protocol. This is Loki's second layer service. So let's take a closer look into the Loki technology stack. Given that Loki is a fork of Monero, it also makes use of ring signatures and mix-ins in order to hide information about the transaction. Loki has a slightly higher ring size requirement than Monero with a minimum of 10. Then you have the service nodes. These are essentially the staking component of the proof of work slash proof of stake consensus model at Loki. These are a similar concept to the popular master nodes that you may have heard about on other cryptocurrencies. These service nodes are able to help secure the network and they're also used to create service node applications or snaps. Now, while we're on these snaps, I may as well mention the Loki Messenger. This is the first app that has been planned on the network and it is a decentralized, private, encrypted messaging service. Another really interesting feature of Loki is LokiNet. This provides anonymous browsing functionality, so it's similar in some ways to Tor or I2P. However, the key difference with LokiNet is that it was developed in order to fully mitigate Sybil attacks. I won't go into too much detail on this here, but if you are interested in reading more about LokiNet or any other parts of the technology stack, then you can read our long form review, which is in the link below. Another key part of the Loki network has to be their Loki coin. This has a number of use cases in the Loki ecosystem. They're used for sending transactions as well as staking on the service nodes. Loki coins can be mined using the same hashing algorithms as Monero's, that is Cryptonite. The Loki team is quite diverse in experience. According to their website, there are four executive team members, 10 developers and eight supporting organizations. The team actually held a private sale of 15% of their token supply back in March of 2018 and were able to raise $9 million. There was no public crowd sale of Loki, although there was a pretty sizable airdrop that took place not long after the private sale. Now, in terms of trading, there are only a limited number of exchanges that list Loki. These include Trade Ogre and KuCoin. There are also really thin trading volumes on these exchanges. Total daily turnover is quite low, which does not bode well for liquidity. This means that you could struggle to get execution without much slippage on these exchanges. Not ideal. In terms of storage, given that this is a native token, the only wallet that supports it at this stage is Loki's official wallet. Thankfully, though, this wallet is supported on Windows, Mac and Linux, as well as on iOS and Android. And here's a side note. You can also download LokiNet if you want to privately browse or access Loki's snaps. So what do I really think of Loki? Well, I like the fact that they are using the battle-hardened privacy tech in Monero's core protocol. Moreover, their service node proof of stake component as well as LokiNet are useful improvements which could differentiate Loki from its more established brethren. Having said all this though, there is really low trading volume for this coin and this could be a large barrier to adoption from the larger cryptocurrency community. Hopefully, the team has plans for further exchange listings and, while they're at it, more wallet support. Are you a fan of LokiNet? Is this a fair review? We'd love to know in the comments below. Also, if you found this video helpful, then let me know by hitting that like button. You'll make my day. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. Many more reviews will be coming your way.